Ooh, okay, so today we have September 27th, 2000 up today, a show I was a little bit concerned about when channel member Tim made the request. It's late here in the run, leading up to a very much needed hiatus, and you know, they were definitely running on fumes, kind of leading into those last shows, I thought even probably the last few weeks, and this show, I wouldn't, definitely didn't, I wouldn't say the show felt lazy, but it did have a little bit of a tired feel to it. But then they still somehow pulled it off and turned it into a um, very good show, you know, kind of more the good to probably above average for sure. You know, I don't know if it was a, you know, I don't know if we put it in the great category, man. I don't know. <laughs> so, and I, what I did like is how it started, like the start when they do, um, when they're just kind of bouncing all around different, what feels like uh, could be different bands, different genres almost, maybe not genres, but like, for example, Sample in a Jar, My Friend, Beauty of a, My Dreams, and My Soul. Lots of my's there in the start of the show. My, my, my. What's up with that? Just, that just, just, just occurred to me. Actually, it's my, 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 my friend, my friend beauty of my dreams and my soul you know trey just wasn't feeling see what i mean he was tired he wasn't very creative he was like well what's what comes after my friend uh, beauty of my dreams what about my soul i don't know what's up with that so um <clears throat> interesting let's read a lot into it man so they were and they were all very good nothing special there really going on a little bit of something with Paige at the end of my friend my friend and then leading into limb by limb Split open and melt. The best part, right there, mid first set, like you would expect. You know, they didn't. Uh, they didn't. What little bit they had left, they didn't want to spend it all right there at the beginning of the first set. But then you get something, a little bit of a tease to what's to come with uh, limb by limb, and also a dirt in between there, in between the split open and melt and limb by limb. Really, both of them. Trey just going to town. And look, whether if you like Horn or hate Horn, you probably weren't going to like this version very much, but then that's fine. They follow that up with a good tasty taste, a tasty taste, and then ending it with a, um, a crowd-pleasing cavern to end the first set. So overall, the first set is probably what I was expecting, even a little bit worried about. It's like, okay, yeah, they're tired, man. It's been over a decade-plus run, essentially, man. They need a break. And uh, not that they were playing, you know. They took some breaks, but really, they played a lot in the 90s, you know. And then uh, the second set, really, they start out with Piper. And it's like, all right, here we go. It took, what, did it take five, six, four, three and a half? Three and a half minutes it took this Piper, really, to get off and going. And um, that is off to the races, really, in my book, you know. I don't know. Sometimes it seems like it's 45 seconds in, they're off. And then somewhere around the eight or nine minute mark, it seemed like, boo, they were going to wrap this Piper up or maybe just kind of chill it out and just be like a nice little type one Piper. Not necessarily the case around the 10 minute mark or so. Trey starts playing this like little drippy riff or something. It just almost like, like boop, boop, boop. I can't even mimic the sound, but it, um, this effect that it had like a watery kind of sound to it, you know, and he stayed with that for a little bit in the jam. And then, uh, Everybody in the band kind of catching on and jamming around that for a little bit. Then he came back to it later on. <clears throat> and then they finished the Piper up. And it never, uh, other than that, you know, that opening segment of it, it really uh, was a different kind of Piper. Then we get into a gumbo, another one very low and chill. You know, I just heard a recent gumbo going all the way back to the beginning of the 90s, early part of the 90s with horns. This is a very different sound. This is equally good, though, really. No horns needed when you got a low, slow, funky jam. Mike Gordon style. Mike Gordon pleasing you. Mike probably wearing some velvet on this night. Fiddler's Green. I know everybody talks about it. I, I forgot. I, man, I can't believe it took me almost four minutes. Fiddler's Green. Everybody that talks about this show, I would say, likes to say Fiddler's Green. Doesn't seem like it, or it would be an Inglewood, Colorado Fiddler's Green. You know, when I think of Colorado, well, I mean, I guess there's the marijuana thing, but I don't really think of green. You know, I think of the Rockies. Look at that guy in a Coors Light commercial. Some leather, some brown. I think of brown. I think of brown when I think of Colorado, really. I know Coors Light. Coors, smooth. All right, this is enough. All right, get yourself a... Don't don't, don't drink Coors Light. It's bad for you. All right, so then we get a... Uh, where were we? Oh, after the gumbo. Well, they weren't quite done, you know. It's like, all right, I thought these guys were tired or something. And we get a, just a rocking ghost. Ghost probably had the... Uh, it stayed kind of within the field, you know. It didn't leave ghost. But um, it did build an intensity as it went. And then we get into a mango song that kind of had a little extra juice to it. You know, these guys might have taken some PEDs at set break. They were kicking in probably some smoothies with B12 in them, I'd say. Now, nah, that's probably more like nowadays. They're doing smoothies and B12 at set break. Back then, who knows? Who knows what they were doing? Might have been a little, uh, 
nostril pleasure. Nah, I wouldn't accuse these guys of doing anything like that, especially John Fishman. Trey, however, I will absolutely accuse Trey of doing cocaine at set break. Probably a bunch of Chomper fans back there by this point. You know, it was madness, you know. He didn't even, God didn't even have a choice. Heavy Things follows the Mango song. So that Piper Through Mango song is all definitely, if you've never heard this show like me, raise your hand if you've never heard it. And then, uh, so we got a Heavy Things. All right, you know, what are you going to do? You know, I wish it was got a Jabu. Could have kept this groove going. Then we got a brother. Big gap in brother, it said in the notes. And then this brother goes after it, man. I wish the brother would have went on a little longer here. It says just under seven minutes. But, boy, it didn't even feel that long, actually. And then, actually, oh, shit, we are actually at You Enjoy Myself. I forgot I wasn't supposed to go this deep. I was just going to talk about the first set. Listen to the You Enjoy Myself. Y-E-M. And then, um... Come back on here and bash Loving Cup. No, all right. So we got we got to check out this YEM, and then um, <clears throat> I guess I'll listen to Loving Cup. For what it's worth, it has zero hearts. By comparison, Piper, Gumbo, twenty one and twenty respectively. Even Heavy Things got one heart. Loving Cup, zero, zero hearts. Not the only one. Sorry, Canada. All right, we'll be back. I thought I was going to be spared a vocal jam, really. When I saw the timestamp, I was like, 1648, I was like, cool, man. I bet you they didn't even do a vocal jam. Nope. Wrong. Wrong. Okay, so the Loving Cup was just a Loving Cup encore. And as far as the YEM goes, it was, um, you know, it was a bit lackluster. They're tired again. All right, I, you know, they won me over, Piper through Brother. YEM. I was like, I knew this show was going to be lousy. Actually, it wasn't. Turned out, Tim, very good suggestion. A, um, you know, probably an underrated show. 2000, not a lot of love from, two, from any show in 2000, really, you know. You had the show in Japan. It's awesome. Um, maybe it was a Binghamton, possibly. Somewhere up in New York, I feel like, also in 2000. And then maybe... Um, Maybe this one, and then the final show at Shoreline was a big deal, of course. So overall, this is a pretty good show, you know, if you're looking around, if you're one of those people that looks for good shows that you've never heard before, September 27, 2000, Fiddler's Green. That does it. We're signing off. They didn't even say thank you, you know, ended it with a vocal jam and then right into Loving Cup. I'm sure they bowed and whatnot, but would, have been, would it have killed one of them to grab a microphone? I've been like, thank you guys. Thanks for coming out to Fiddler's Green. We are fish. We're sick of seeing you all. We're taking a hiatus soon. Bye. This is not a fishing lure. It's an ink pen. Just remember, kids, you can tune a piano, but you can't tune a fish. Boom.